What's up, folks? This is Justin from Books, Bricks, and Boards. You may have noticed that recently I have been on quite the AD&D 2nd Edition kick. Well, that all started when a friend of mine in my group asked if we could play our upcoming Savage Worlds Pathfinder game in the Forgotten Realms. Specifically, he wanted to play Waterdeep. He had heard of Waterdeep from the various 5th edition modules, but I wanted to throw a little bit of a curveball and introduce him to some of the older material. Now, I'm going to be using this in Savage Worlds, but the materials were all built for 2nd edition AD&D. Yes, I lied to you. Hence my AD&D 2 kick. So today, I'm going to be talking about the line of Waterdeep products from AD&D and AD&D 2nd edition. So this is called Wondering About Waterdeep. While Waterdeep did come out of Ed Greenwood's home world building exercise that he did before the invention of Dungeons and Dragons, it also became home to many of the adventures that he ran his home group through. And I'm sure he probably wrote about it in the pages of Dragon Magazine, where a lot of his stuff was originally published. But for the purpose of today's video, we're going to start with the original Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 1st Edition Forgotten Realms campaign set and see how it references Waterdeep. <clears throat> Within the Encyclopedia of the Realms, on page 86 and 87, I believe, we get a couple of pages that are actually 87 and 88. Uh, we get a couple of pages that are dedicated to Waterdeep, gives a very small amount of information about it, and generally gives you an idea of what Waterdeep is. Also, of course, Waterdeep is placed prominently on the map, and on the more southern map of the coast, there is a, an arrow directing where Waterdeep would be found. But, the first edition really gives Waterdeep its due first in Waterdeep and the north. This is actually FR1, so this was a very early release for the Forgotten Realms in 1st Edition. <clears throat> I really like that these old books had maps on the inside and you could just take the cover of the book, you could use it as a screen, you had information inside it. This has actually the sewer systems of Waterdeep as well as a guide to the wards and some random floor plans for inns and other buildings that you might adventure in in Waterdeep. And then you get the nice little map there. <clears throat> it also has a very nice fold-out map of the city of Waterdeep. And then you get to the meat, which is the Waterdeep in the North book. Uh, you will note that Basically, this entire book is about Waterdeep. There's very little about, quote-unquote, the North. This has an in-depth look at the city. It's much more than the page and a half that the box set gave you. It tells you about the different wards, about how the citizens of Waterdeep live. It tells you about the different guilds and families, and gives you some various tables, charts, and guides to the different locations in Waterdeep, as well as the noble families and their crests. As was common in the early days of D&D, &D, uh, the heraldry was very important and was addressed as such in the book. There are some NPCs to use in your games. And then a little bit of a primer 
on how to start adventuring in Waterdeep. And this all for the very low price at the time of $7.95. That was Waterdeep in the North. But they did not stop there in first edition. They also had City System. And City System was very much designed to be a counterpart to the Waterdeep in the North book. City System is a box set, but it's unlike most box sets, and this is a print-on-demand copy of City System that I put in my City System box that doesn't come with the original. The thing that's great about this book, or this box set rather, are the maps. You, you'll see these are all maps included in this box set, and this is the only book. Very small book, tons and tons of maps. There are, I believe, 10 maps, yes, 10 maps that fold out to form one huge map of the city of Waterdeep. And they're so huge. And they also have, of course, floor plans to different buildings around the outside and keep plans and things of that nature. But they're so huge that they would be virtually impossible to lay out as a whole in any meaningful or usable way. But if you just wanted to look at a small portion of the city and actually play in it, well, that these are perfect for. Um, if your players were down on Hog Street and they were running away from some guards, you could very easily see where the buildings were laid out, how the streets ran, where there might be a cul-de-sac to go hide in. And that makes it a somewhat unique product. Now, besides the 10 maps that go together, there are two more. One that covers Castle Waterdeep in all of its glory. And then, probably more impressive, there is this beautiful watercolor rendition of Waterdeep, which you could really put on a wall and uh, it would be a nice piece of art for your game room. But that's not to say that there's no value in this book that came with the box set either. So while it is small, uh, just about 30 pages, yeah, 32 pages, this has a ton of useful tables that if you were having a campaign that was built around Waterdeep would be quite handy with the legal code. Uh, there is a table in here somewhere about what kind of things you might find if you pick pot, pocket someone in Waterdeep. Um, random building, building creation tools, um, different shops and uh, a key to where the different stores and inns are in all of the different wards and different random encounter tables and just basically ways to make Waterdeep come alive for your table. And this book in particular is extremely valuable now because even if you're not playing in AD and D, which well you should be, but even if you're not, it's mainly non-mechanical information. It's world building. So this is evergreen and it's available in a drive RPG from on demand. Of course, whenever TSR advanced Forgotten Realms into the second edition, they didn't ignore Waterdeep. And here in the Forgotten Realms campaign box set, this is the second version. There was an earlier version as well. This is the one that I've got. Uh, there is a three-page section on Waterdeep, uh, so a little bit more detail than the previous edition. 
uh, which has some nice heraldry on the side and kind of gives a very abbreviated version of some of the information that you would have seen in the city system booklet. It talks about the citizenry and life in Waterdeep. Then whenever you get to the Running the Realms book, there are actually stats for, uh, abbreviated stats, for Kelvin Blackstaff Arunson, a uh, prominent wizard from Waterdeep. And of course, when we get into our beautiful maps, you have Waterdeep right there on the maps as well. And these uh, second edition maps of this style are actually my favorite maps of the realms, uh, other than the ones in al that are in a similar style. But in my opinion, what really brought Waterdeep to prominence, at least at my table, was Volo's Guide to Waterdeep. And he is actually detailed in the uh, book in the campaign box set. But this was eye-opening uh, for a young, impressionable gamer. And I had never heard of Fodor's travel guides. Uh, and, you know, this just seemed like a totally unique thing to me at the time. But it's, it's very much based upon what a high-end travel guide of the real world would look like if that same reviewer was talking about the different attractions and details of the city of Waterdeep. It's got a great system of measuring danger and cost and quality of inns and of different areas of the city and shops and all sorts of little interesting tidbits of secret information and things that you can just kind of slow roll out to your players. And then, of course, it also had this fold-out map, which we would use heavily in the game that I played in Waterdeep as a young man. Now, this is also available as a print-on-demand. Uh, though it doesn't have the fold-out map, obviously, in the print on demand version. But they didn't stop there, because they also did this awesome box set. This is the City of Splendors, which is the nickname for Waterdeep. And that is Kelvin Arunson writing what looks to be a Kirin in the cover art. And... This box set is probably the pinnacle for Waterdeep. If you were wanting to run a Waterdeep campaign and you could only buy one product, this is probably the one to get. And the reason being, it's got this amazing campaign guide that has tons and tons of real world history about the authors and editors of this box set talking about their experiences in Waterdeep, including, of course, Ed Greenwood and his experiences as he was creating Waterdeep. But then beyond that, it talks about not just Waterdeep itself, but all of the lands around it. And it gives great little adventure seeds in those paragraphs about different things that you could send your players to investigate or, or different artifacts that they might find out in the wilds in different areas. It talks about, of course, the different wards of Waterdeep and also the different houses. And it talks about different dangers that you might encounter in Waterdeep and the different NPCs that you will see. And it goes into great detail on the laws and the day-to-day -day life of Waterdeep has new spells, new magical items, and then also has a great uh, capture of 
I believe this was one of the original maps that Ed Greenwood had hand drawn and used. Uh, it talks about in the book how whenever the editor received the, uh, the maps to use as a reference, they took an entire room in the office when they were all laid out, which probably very similar to the way the city system maps look, honestly. Uh, you know, whole section on Skullport, which is an underground city below Waterdeep. Um, but lots and lots of great gameable material in here. And again, most of this is not mechanical, so it's evergreen. The Adventurer's Guide to the City. This is going to give you great ideas for different places that your players are going to want to see and also ways to create characters that are at home in Waterdeep as a citizen of Waterdeep. Got some more NPCs. Then we've got the Who's Who of Waterdeep, which is going to give you the factions, it's going to give you the NPCs, it's going to give you shopkeeps and all sorts of different, oh, all of the, the churches and religions and temples in Waterdeep and even the cults, all of the different adventuring companies, and also the threats to Waterdeep, as if much would be a threat to Waterdeep, the City of Splendors. And then this book, almost as a throwback to the coverless book inside of City System, is just some nice little DM-only information that you can use to spice up your campaign. You can decide what in there is worthwhile and what is even true in your campaign. I remember as a kid, the first time I saw this particular box set, I didn't like these maps at all. These maps uh, used photographs of actual models of districts of the city of Waterdeep. And I hated that as a kid. But now that I've grown to appreciate miniature terrain, I feel very differently about it. There were some monsters that came in here uh, as tear out sheets. These are going to be very similar to the fold out maps of. Castle Waterdeep, if not the exact, from the city system set. This is a very neat fold out here. This is the Thirsty Throat Tavern, uh, which would be a great place to have as kind of a base of operations for your players to activate out of and has very good detail in there to take advantage of that. Then we have some more of the blown up fold out maps of the different wards of Waterdeep that you can put together. Of course, this one is just two instead of the massive 10 that were in the city system. And this is a blown up version of the Adventurer's Quarter Again, done with the photos of the miniature terrain to create the map. Like I said, if I was only going to have one Waterdeep product, this would be it. If I didn't want to spend a fortune and only have one Waterdeep product, this would be my backup. But there's more reasons to visit Waterdeep than just to go shopping. There's also, of course, the ruins of Undermountain underneath the city. And there are some great box sets there. Now, this one is the Crim de la Crim. This is a great mega dungeon. And it has really nice guides to create adventures in Undermountain. And it's not a traditional adventure. You're not going to just go in order and do this room first and then this room and then this room. No, you're just going to explore. 
And to be honest, a lot of the map is left up to your own devices. It is not filled in. But there's enough that's filled in to give you an idea of how to finish out the rest of it. But you can see Thunder Mountain is just a massive complex of interweaving dungeon rooms and caverns. And in the fluff, it explains why it might not be the same each time you come back because Alistair, the Mad Mage, is constantly changing and rearranging and introducing new beasties and new rooms into the dungeon. It has some awesome little cards to give you some random tables for your adventures in Undermountain. And again, a lot of this is evergreen. I'm going to be sending my Savage Worlds players through under Mountain very soon. But there weren't just one Under Mountain box. There wasn't just one Under Mountain box, sorry. For my poor English. There was also the Ruins of Under Mountain 2. This is not quite as well designed as the first one. Um, and it's not really as directly connected to the first one as I'd hoped. Uh, so the kind of the story is that there are disjointed parts of Under Mountain that you may not even be accessing these lower levels through the original levels because you have to go through like a side tunnel or whatever to get to them. So you can use this without the first box set. The first is the better of the two. This one is going to have the same kind of setup, the campaign guide and the adventure guide for the lower levels. And of course, it's got the great maps. They are a little bit more blown up than the maps of the original box set. And mine, of course, have been written on. Uh, I got this used from the UK. But still, you get the idea. There are tons and tons and tons of areas under mountain to explore underneath the city of Waterdeep. And again, with the great cards, with the random tables, you can introduce flavor to your campaign. And then monsters. I didn't mention the monsters in the first Undermountain box, but trust me, they were in there too. Oh, that's a lot of stuff. That's a whole lot of stuff. And there's more. Wizards didn't stop here. They also had some adventures that were set in Waterdeep that would give you a little more insight into the city. And then they had even more stuff in third edition. They had a great uh, hardbound book called The City of Splendors, which was a little bit confusing because we've got the box sets that's also just called City of Splendors. And then, of course, in fifth edition, they had uh, the two campaigns that were set in the city of Waterdeep uh, with the Dungeon of the Mad Mage and other one is escaping me, uh, but it, it was uh, set in uh, in Waterdeep, and it was based upon the seasons of the year, and you had different enemies based upon the, the seasons that you would play in that adventure. So, Waterdeep, this, it's not just a city. Um, you can tell by the sheer amount of material, and some will say, well, yeah, but there's a lot of overlap and reprint of material. Yes, that's true. But there is a ton of volume here, and there is a lot of detail. And depending upon how deep you want to go, quite literally or just metaphorically, Waterdeep has enough to keep your players busy for decades. And 
you don't have to worry about the campaign getting stale because you could be doing political game sessions. You can be doing mass combat with the the Waterdeep naval system, or you could be fighting the city guard or working with the city guard or dealing with the monsters that are coming out of the Undermountain or exploring the ruins of Undermountain or making deals with Xanathar. There's just so much to this city. It feels like it's alive and it feels like the history of it is real because it is to those of us that played there for many, many years. So that is my wonderings about Waterdeep. And I would love to hear yours. So if you've played games in Waterdeep, if you plan to play games in Waterdeep, if you hadn't known about some of these different products that are available, most of these you can get on Drive to RPG. I'd love to hear about it. Tell me about your experiences in Waterdeep. Tell me about your city campaigns in general. And most of all, have some fun. Get some friends to the table. Play some games. This has been Justin from Books, Bricks, and Boys. Good game. God bless. And happy Father's Day.